hopefully you've really enjoyed the um, experiments that you did um, both with the kinetic and potential energy and learning a lot about energy transformation. Um, what I want to talk about today is just um, basically the energy resources that we have to produce energy for our energy needs as people um, in the earth. So when we talk about energy, um, there's a lot of politically charged discussions around some of this stuff. Um, when you look on the internet, you're going to see things that are really lopsided one way or the other. It's um, oh, all fossil fuels are bad and we should be going all with renewable energy. But then there's a lot of um, disadvantages to that. But there's, there's, a, there's benefits and disadvantages both ways. So what I'm going to attempt to do today is try to, to lay out um, a pretty even-handed discussion as to uh, both renewable and non-renewable energy and just try to, to really give you an understanding of what's going on in some of these discussions today um, because it is something that gets a lot of press uh, in our world. So when we talk about our energy needs, our energy needs are met by one of two different types of resources, either non-renewable or renewable. And when we say renewable resources, what we're talking about is something that we can replace or that can be replaced uh, within our lifetime. Something that is non-renewable generally takes much longer than a human lifetime to be able to replace it. Um, so if I, let's talk it with non-renewable first, because about 85% of all of our energy needs are being met by non-renewable resources. So these are going to break down into two categories. The first category are, is that that's made of fossil fuels. And if you studied any kind of earth science, uh, you know what a fossil is. It's um, dead plant or animal matter that's been preserved in a way so that you can see its, its structure. Um, well, a fossil fuel is made from dead plant or animal matter. And if you are um, an evolutionist, you tend to believe that fossil fuels took millions and millions of years to make. However, if you are a creationist and you believe in a very short lifespan for the earth, um, then you believe that a lot of these fossil fuels happened and were created during the time of the flood um, and that we see in the book of Genesis where we just had huge amounts of water and huge amounts of plants and animals that were killed by that flood and then all of those sediments were compacted and then that created a lot of the coal um, and the oil and those kinds of things that we now have and are using today. In fact, there has been some research that has been done um, right after Mount St. Helens erupted. Um, there was a, a lake that was floating with all kinds of uh, logs. And what they're discovering is they've continued to study that lake. Because Mount St. Helens uh, erupted back in the 80s. I happen to remember that. I was in grade school when it happened. And so they've been studying that lake. And they're, what they're seeing now is they're studying this lake is that within over the past 20 to 25 years, they're seeing processes start to happen that look like the beginning of a coal bed from the eruption of this volcano. And so it's, it's really interesting to actually see that happening before our eyes and to see that um, what happened during the flood is, and how creationists thought that that's probably how a lot of these deposits were made. Um, it's exciting to see that that is being played out now um, out in Washington state where that uh, volcano actually erupted a number of years ago and they can see those kinds of things happening. So fossil fuels um, include oil, they include coal, and they include natural gas. Now another non-renewable resource is nuclear energy. We are actually going to spend a chapter uh, later on in the semester talking about nuclear energy and helping you understand how that works. Um, there's been a lot of bad press about nuclear energy because there have been a lot of nuclear accidents. You may have heard of um, Chernobyl or some of the other accidents and there was one that happened in Japan uh, not too long ago um, when a tsunami hit and there was a lot of nuclear waste that was spilled um, but nuclear energy is a very useful form of energy uh, when it is done carefully and done well so let's talk about some of the benefits and disadvantages of non-renewable uh, resources um, benefits if we start there uh, it's actually relatively inexpensive to get energy from these forms of 
uh, fuel simply because we've developed the technology and we've been using it for a very long time. And so um, we don't have to put a lot of money into getting energy out of these types of things. Um, they are relatively abundant. Now, a number of years ago, you would have seen a lot of discussion that said that, oh, we're going to run out of coal, we're going to run out of oil, we're going to run out of all these things. But there have been um, new resources of coal and oil and natural gas discovered all of the time. And um, our ability to process them more efficiently is growing all of the time. And so right now, we, from what I'm reading and seeing, we're not seeing that this is something that we're going to run out of just within the next few years. And so right now these resources are still relatively abundant for us to be able to use. There's also a high usable energy content in them. And so what I mean by that is that, let's take for example nuclear fuel. It takes a very small amount of, um, of, a, of a nuclear nuclear fuel to produce a huge amount of energy. And the same thing is true with, with these things. We can produce a lot of, a lot of heat or um, a lot of um, gasoline with a small amount of these items. And so that's what I mean by high usable energy content. Um, so you get a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak. Now, yes, there are disadvantages from using these non-renewable resources. Um, one is that when we burn these things, there is air pollution. Um, another, one thing that is true about that air pollution though, um, a lot of the things that you read now, people are going to try to tell you that air pollution has increased so much um, since you know we've started using even more and more of these fuels because the population of the world has increased. And actually that's not true. Um, the amount of pollution that is in the air now is far less than it was if you look back in the late 60s and early 70s. And the amount of air pollution just isn't there, um, at least in some places. Now, some countries aren't doing a real good job of uh, trying to curb some of that pollution, but in countries where they're really working at that, they have done a good job and there's not nearly as much pollution now uh, as there used to be from using these fuels. Um, there is also um, the chance that these, that mining these fuels can degrade environment. I grew up in an area of the country uh, of the United States where there was a lot of strip mining of coal and it just really uh, tears up the landscape and destroys um, a lot of the other natural resources beyond the coal and so that that's not a good thing um, for fossil fuels and again there is a finite amount I mean I, I, I did say that they're abundant but we also know that there is a finite amount and so at some point we may start having trouble with scarcity so uh, a lot of disadvantages, but also a lot of benefits to using these non-renewable resources. Now, if we talk about renewable resources, again, these are resources that are going to, um, that can be replaced within our lifetime. There are a number of uh, different uh, types available. Biomass is where we take a plant and animal material and um, reuse that in some way to make fuel. Um, hydroelectric is where you've got a big river and you put up a dam, you run the water uh, over that dam to generate electricity out of it. A geothermal is using the heat that actually comes out of the ground in order to uh, heat homes and heat water. Uh, my father-in-law actually has a geothermal system in, in his home. He's been heating his home that way for years. Solar, we're probably seeing a whole lot more solar panels than we used to see. And so solar energy is is something that's really up and coming. Um, wind, if you've ever seen any of these big, huge wind farms with gigantic uh, windmills, uh, wind is being used to generate power. And if you live close enough to the ocean, there are um, tidal forms of generation of power as well. Now again, benefits and disadvantages to this. Um, and you'll see here that my disadvantages right now are outweighing my benefits. Um, some of these are are things that technology is going to be able to solve as scientists continue to work on these issues. But if I look at the benefits, um, most renewable energy is considered clean. Um, you'll also hear it called green energy uh, because we don't have the air pollution that comes from using a lot of these things from burning um, like we do when we burn fossil fuels. Um, we also can't run out of these things. I mean, the sun isn't going to suddenly stop shining. The wind's not going to stop blowing. 
And so we're not going to run out of these things. However, disadvantages, uh, right now we can't produce enough energy for all of our energy needs from these particular resources. Um, I told you that about 85% of our power is coming from these non-renewable resources and there's no way that we can use just this to be able to produce enough energy for our needs at this point in time. They're also far more expensive and part of that is, is just because we haven't developed the technology yet to be able to use a lot of these things. The facilities uh, to generate power from these types of things take a whole lot more space um, than facilities that can generate power from our non-renewable resources. They just take more land space to be able to, um, to generate that power. And so more facilities means more expense and more land use. Um, they're also not completely reliable. I mean, if you have a cloudy day, that greatly decreases the amount of solar energy that you're gonna be able to get. Or you can still get some because it's, you know, it, solar energy still gets to the clouds, but you don't have nearly uh, enough or nearly as much as if you have bright sunny days. And so um, the location for a lot of these things is huge because if you live in the middle of Kansas, a, a tidal resource isn't going to help you very much because you don't live very close to any place where there are tides. Um, there's a lot of sun out in the desert, um, but most of our cities aren't there and you'd have to transport um, that solar power a long way where most of our cities are located um, so people could actually utilize it. There's not wind in every single place, at least certainly not enough wind to be able to generate power. So. Um, if you don't live near a, a, a big river, hydroelectric isn't going to be much of an option for you. So location is huge. And I, you know, you probably can, can hear people argue, well, just, you know, transport that along power lines. Well, the problem is, and you'll learn about this when you study electricity, um, you lose power um, through those electrical lines. And you're going to lose, in fact, as much as six to eight percent of the power that you generate uh, through the electrical lines. And the further you have to take the lines, the more power you're going to lose. And so transporting power over long distances isn't ideal. And that's why this location is such such a problem, uh, because, again, if you live in a, a place that's cloudy most of the time, transporting solar power from the desert just isn't feasible. Um, and finally, there are still some environmental concerns with a lot of these things too. Just as one example, um, a lot of the wind um, farms that have been put up, uh, there's um, a huge number of these windmills um, that are about two hours north of where I live and there's been a lot of complaints that um, there's been a lot of birds killed by a lot of these um, turbines, these wind turbines. and so. Um, just because the resource may be renewable doesn't necessarily mean that it can't also damage the environment. So even though there are a lot of disadvantages here, there definitely are some benefits. And a lot of it is just going to take scientists really digging in and doing some of this research in order to be able to come up with reasonable solutions to continue to meet our energy needs. Um, so this is renewable is certainly an option and in some places it's going to be a fantastic option um, But non-renewable resources should not be counted out there The technologies that we have come up with have reduced a lot of the disadvantages from what they were even 50 years ago So again, hopefully that's been kind of a balanced discussion at least I tried to make it balanced on both advantages and disadvantages of uh, the new renewable and the non-renewable resources